right, our next guest is one of the most successful stand-up comedians on planet Earth. He has played to over 800,000 fans on his recent Big World Tour. What an honour to welcome the mighty, the magnificent Michael McIntyre to the show. How are you? Hey. How are you doing? Are you well? Sorry, I don't normally clap myself, but there's so few people, I feel like I have to inject. <laughs> Well, I think, I think that's very wise. I've got to say, I've always dreamt of having you on the show, and I never thought that it would be like this, where you'd be on the show and neither of us would be in the studio. No, but it does very much look like we're in the same room, James. I mean, if you look at the curtains behind you, it looks like I might actually be sitting directly behind you. I see yeah, if I do that, that, you're just... You're the other side of those curtains. That's what yeah. no-one knows. We're both <laughs> isolating. Like... We're sitting back to back. We've both gone to the beigest rooms on Earth. I think our strategy to fight this virus is beige. I just think the more beige that you can get in your room and I can get in mine, and maybe we can fend this thing off. Well, I also think beige mixed with dark block colours can only be a good thing for the physique. No, I'm standing at, well, this, 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 and also the camera has to be, this is why you need to adjust the camera. I mean, I do a lot of my zooms here. This is, <laughs> this is how I feel that represents me best. Yeah, I am also <laughs> struggling. I got this, um, I, I got this light thing to try and look good for you. The but ring I, light, yeah. It's around. What's it called? I think it's called a ring light. Yes, it's a ring light, but the thing is, is it, it, I can't wear my glasses because I'm blind. So when I put it like that, this, this starts happening. <laughs> so if you introduce me like that, I mean, that is crazy. Is this a symptom? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how other people are doing this, but I assume they're not spectacle wearers. So anyway, so, I'm going to turn that round. Have you been doing a lot of Zooming? How, how does Michael McIntyre get on with the Zooms? Aspects of it I really enjoy, James. I really like the name thing, because you are very personable, and I've always admired you for that. You're very kind to people. You remember people's names, and people note that about you, and I've always thought James is great at that. I know nobody's names. Nobody who works on my TV show, I'm sorry to say, I don't know any of their names. I know they're on the credits, but, you know, I'm normally rewinding the show to watch my bits back. I've never... I don't know their names, James. I'm sorry to admit it. But on Zoom, we have these meetings, and you just put your mouse over the thing and their name pops up, and I've been going huge on the names now. I'm like, so, Jasmine, what do you think? And you can see their eyes going, oh, my God, he knows me. No idea. First time I've, I've learnt their name. Now, you're back in Britain. How are things in the United Kingdom right now? Sorry, I'm just moving my mouse. Yes, James Corden. Um, <laughs> no. Things are going really well. I am... Um, hold on. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm 36.8. You know what, James? Have you got one of these? Oh, our house is full of them. You can't move for them. The phone rang the other day and I picked one up. <laughs> <laughs> what do you run at, though? Because I never know. I run at 30, 36, 8 constantly. But we're Fahrenheit, so you, I'm, last time I did one, I was like 96, 97, something like that. Oh, yes, I remember now because I had it on the wrong setting and took myself to the hospital because I thought, <laughs> like, like, five times... I was, like, I'm, I'm, like, five times hotter than the average human. But then I realised it was a Fahrenheit thing. Let's talk <laughs> about your first Netflix special, Michael McIntyre, Showman. It is... I'm going to say it. I think it's one of the best specials I've seen on Netflix. It's certainly my favourite I've seen this year. I think it's so brilliant. And this was... You taped this in March. So was that before... Because you went on a huge world tour. You played two sold-out shows at Radio City Music Hall in New York. You played stadiums and arenas all over the world. Was this taped at the end of the tour? Yes, it was, it was a week before this all happened. It was March, March the 6th we recorded it in London. So it was oh. all just sort of starting a little bit. You know, we were at the hand-washing phase, but no one was taking anything particularly seriously. I, the first thing I said on the night was, this could be the last time we get together 
um, as an audience that were allowed to gather together, not for a moment did I think that was true. I mean, it was a complete joke. People were laughing. I was making jokes about washing your hands. I think I introduced myself off stage by saying, you know, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and wash them for, you know, 30 seconds. It was all just a bit of a joke. And then really quickly, as you remember, everything just yeah. ramped up. And I've had this six months of having this record of my last day at work, which I've been watching. I mean, I'm trying to get people to watch the Netflix special. I've seen it a lot. I mean, <laughs> I'm just, it's the only thing I've clung on to. It's, the, it's this record of a life I left behind before I got into, you know, baking and hairdressing and crying watching the news. <laughs> Do you feel like that? I mean, do you? I mean, does it play on your mind? Obviously, you play to so many, tens of thousands of people. Are you worried about how long it will be before you get to get, be back out there again? And how much are you missing it? Yeah, I do, I do miss it a lot. Obviously, you know, to, to have ideas and to express them in an audience. Um, but, you know, we cling on to that amazing day, James, when it all comes back, whenever that'll be. I mean, it's going to be... It's going to be so joyous at a bit. Well, you know, once we're... I'm confronted with an audience full of vaccinated, antibodied, you know, safe people. Um, it's going to be amazing. But yeah, it's going to be a wait. And I'll be watching my own Netflix special until then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you even talk in the special about when you played in Hong Kong and you could see people wearing, you walking around and people are wearing face masks. I mean, you could have had no idea at the time that this routine would be so topical today. I mean, this is what happens. It, it, it changed so quickly. I mean, it, I do become slightly self-obsessed with what is still funny. There, there's a joke about Kim Jong-un. And look, I know that he's obviously not a great guy, but I didn't want to lose the joke. So there was that weird period where they thought he'd died and they were like, Kim Jong-un, no one seen him. And my first thought is, oh God, I can't lose that joke. <laughs> so I was like, but everyone's like celebrating that Kim Jong Un. It might be his reign is over, and I'm like, please, Kim, come on, show yourself. And then after a few weeks, they found Kim Jong Un, and I'm like, come on, <laughs> <laughs> go on, Kimmy boy. Let me tell you, Michael. I think the special is absolutely brilliant, and I think it's going to bring so much joy to so many people, particularly in this moment that we're in right now. Let's take a look at a clip from Michael McIntyre, showman. Showman? Showman? How are you saying it? Showman? No, it's completely open to interpretation. I alternate <laughs> between showman and showman. Showman, okay. 